Queen Elizabeth is taking the Lombardi Trophy across the pond to bring London their first ever Super Bowl. Now in Madden 24, you can relocate a franchise, but what players are going on this team? I found a list of the top 10 best-selling jerseys in the UK. Do you think you could guess the players? Number one is DK Metcalf. Number two is Tyler Lockett. They love Seattle. Three is Mike Evans. Four is Derrick Henry. Then it's Rodgers, Hawkinson, Brady, Justin Jefferson, Kirk Cousins, and Vita Vea. So we'll be restarting the entire NFL in a fantasy draft. And using this list, we have a lot of targets to look for in the draft. This is a biblically accurate Queen Elizabeth, by the way. That's actually what she looked like. And you can't tell me otherwise because you've never met her. We'll start as the Seahawks and relocate as the season goes. All right, it's time to start our fantasy draft. We know what players we're targeting. Hey, we got round one pick 22. Low key, it's a pretty good spot because my first pick is going to be DK Metcalf. He's really not not worth this high of a pick, but I don't know who else out of that list I would take. I guess I could take Mike Evans, but no, he's not very good for a rebuild. He is 30 years old. Although is Rogers still available? Ooh, Rogers is 39. I can't do that either. All right, London's getting their number one guy with the most jerseys sold, DK Metcalf. That's gonna be the cornerstone of our franchise because he's 25, dude. He's gonna be a hard 99 overall, no question. Next up is round two, pick 11. I don't think Derek. Oh my God, he is. Derrick Henry's still in here. <laughs> yeah, that's an insane duo. Hey, and they even think that's a good pick. Wide receiver one, DK Metcalf. Halfback one, Derrick Henry. Round three, pick 22. What about Rodgers? Is he still in there? Rodgers is still in here, but so is Kirk Cousins. So those are the two quarterback options. I don't need to really take this right now. Mike Evans is gone, sadly. Jefferson's gone. <laughs> what about Vita Vea? Vita Vea's in here, man. This is 100% a reach, but they do have Vita Vea in top 10 jerseys sold. Actually, that's hardly a reach. They've got his true value at 87. I took him at 86. Vita Vea also is absurdly good, 98 strength. He's a superstar D tackle, and those are pretty hard to come by. So it's so far, the London jersey sales have drafted a pretty good team. Round four, pick 11. I could still get Rodgers or or Perk Thuggins. What about Hawkinson? Hawkinson is available right at the top. He's 26 and star. Uh, I guess I'll take Hawkinson. Dude, my concern about taking Rodgers. Wow. Oh my God. Guys, what the fuck is up with the true value on these picks? 107, 107. Let's go. Also, Hawkinson looks like an idiot. What is with the lighting on this? What is like, how is this a polished finish game? That looks so fucking goofy. Round five, pick 22. Don't tell me. Oh, Kirko. Hey, listen. Perk Thuggins is still in here. I feel obligated to take this. He's number nine on there. Yeah, I know the true value is not there, but Seattle slash London wants him. So we're taking him. Dude, we've actually got like most of this team. Is there's no way Lockett's available at round six, right? I don't know what overall he is either. No way. Puka Nakua doesn't even have a face scan. Puka Nakua doesn't have a face scan. I don't know if you guys know this, but I just got to play Madden with Puka Nakua. I met him the other day. He's so nice. Doesn't even have a face scan. All right, we have officially gotten every single player that we could get off of the UK's list. So it's time for us to pick the rest of our team. I'm going to pick up Christian Wilkins. He's an 87 overall right end. He has amazing stats and he's 27 years old. And whoa, apparently that's a really good pick. I have no idea how he's still available because I'm drafting against all CPUs. I feel like they usually, they usually know what they're doing. Round seven, pick 22. I'm going to pick up an 89 overall left guard. Looks like it was a little bit of a reach, but hey, we got Derrick Henry. We got DK Metcalf. We got Kirk Cousins. We got to get those guys some, some upfront talent, you know? This is a rebuild too, though, so I definitely want to draft some younger guys. Let's sort by age. Who's in here? A lot of good hatbacks, unfortunately. Ooh, Jalen Carter. Jalen Carter is super good. Yo, Jordan Davis is still available? I have taken that. What? Wait, is this the nastiest D-tackle combo in the entire league? Vita Vea and Jordan Davis. Probably don't need that position, but that's kind of crazy that he's available. Might end up trading him. We'll see. Next up, I'll pick up Brian Branch at strong safety. He's hidden death. Computer thinks that was a solid take, so I'll take him. At corner, I'm actually going to pick up Cam Taylor Britt here. They think I'm reaching. I love CTB, and he's really, really young. We have no corners on this team. I just realized that. That's actually... It's a huge issue. I didn't really think about it till right now, but I should have picked one up earlier. Charles Cross is available. I can't believe he's still available. Is that really a bad pick? 
A 22-year-old left tackle? All right, I th I'm a fucking casual. Round 12, pick 11. This is going to be my last pick, and then I want the computer to choose the rest of London's team. But I want one more young guy, at least relatively young. Oh, Jalen Petrie, bro. I love Jalen Petrie. 24 free safety. Woo! We get Brian Branch at strong safety, Jalen Petrie at free safety. The rest of London is in the hands of Madden Simulation. Now, of course, we've still got to relocate the team, and this video will not end until I win the Super Bowl. This is a new type of rebuild for me. Usually, I take an existing NFL team and rework them to glory. Now I'm taking a team that I drafted, and I got to take them to the Super Bowl. And as always, I set my draft class strength to strong for every position. It's just way better that way. Very first thing we got to do, we got to relocate. Houston, Albuquerque, Mexico City. That rebuild might be coming. I need a Latina bitch to come in here and teach me what's good. Buenos Aires? What, Argentina, Rio de Janeiro? San Juan? There's actually a, an absurd amount of relocation spots hey dublin that's my that's my people the irish are my people i wonder if i should do that one day but we're going to london baby tea crumpets queens and eiffel towers i don't know anything about anything london has already hosted nfl games why not make them an official part of the league their market size is huge and their personality is loyal badass that's actually it's a pretty big it's a pretty big compliment we could be the antlers i don't think that's very i don't think it's very london-esque it's that's not very british the armadillos the aviators the bisons the black knights that's got a ring to it the blues bulls it shows the fans interest bisons are powerful beasts strong fast and agile they make formidable foes it's like gayest shit i ever read <laughs> there was like a four-year time stamp where i couldn't say gay on videos and we've come full circle it's cool to say again <laughs> the condors these soaring vultures are some of the largest most imposing creatures in the sky i kind of like that yo the monarchs we gotta be the monarchs, right? London was like a monarchy, right? Monarchy is the oldest form of government in the United Kingdom. Oh my God, the, the, our fate has been decided. We're 100% the monarchs. Let's go. I don't need to see the rest of these. Basic canopy stadium? Do I look poor to you? We're not even using American money. We're using London money. That's like euros. One dollar is like five million euros. That's also not true. I don't care. Basic futuristic stay. Holy shit. Hell yeah, I'm rocking that. What? Hell yeah. The castle? London, England. The, it's called the castle. Are you sucking my dick? Oh my God. This is so awesome. I can't believe I'm getting so geeked up right now. <laughs> For the fucking monarchs. Look at that shit. Look at that shit. All right, now it's time to see what roster were we given. So we drafted our first 12 guys, but the CPU did the rest. Let's hope they did a good job. Looking at our offensive line right now, I actually see multiple hidden dev. Oh no, it's just the same guy. It's Osiris Torrance twice. That's honestly okay. Oh, yo, they took McCole Hardman and Van Jefferson. Von Jefferson. I don't know, but... Offense looks really good. Oh, Cyrus Torrance is a guard out of Florida. Uh, he's 23. He's going to progress really well for a rebuild here. The Monarchs unis look kind of goofy. I'm not going to lie, but I'm still... Hey, I love our kit. It's all good. Now, Cyrus Torrance, he is a right guard. I want him to stay that way, but I do need to move him up in the depth chart. Gabe Jackson may literally be a higher overall, but Gabe Jackson is 32. I am not rocking with Gabe Jackson. Oh, Cyrus Torrance is definitely going to start. They got us Garrett Bradbury, and then we got Charles Cross and Tooney. This is a really good O-line. Hawkinson's amazing. Our backup tight end is trash. Tucker Craft. At least he's a rookie out of South Dakota State, so he should progress decently. Metcalf looks incredible. Derrick Henry looks incredible. Kirk Cousins is old. I really do wonder if Kirk Cousins will make it all the way to the Super Bowl with us or if he'll retire. So that's <laughs> remains to be seen. They took Stetson Bennett. That's funny. Uh, backup hatbacks are trash. That doesn't matter. They're not going to get any reps. And defensively, oh God, those linebackers are pitiful. So Petrie, that was my pick. Brian Branch was my pick as well. I took a CTB. They got Caleb Farley. Caleb Farley is so good. So he's star dev and he's young. He looks like a badass in that Monarchs headband. Wait just a minute. And then, dude, he's so fucking fast. This guy was like built to play mad. 95 speed, 95 excel. So good. So I'm going to move him up in the depth chart. He's definitely got to be CB2. And uh, Mike Hughes will get bumped down. But that's okay. Christian Wilkins is going to be great. Vita Vey is going to be great. Oh, uh, looks like we did get Aziz Ojolari, who already has an upgrade, interestingly enough. 
Right now, he's specced out as a speed rusher. He's a good linebacker. Two years in the league, 86 speed, 91 excel. Definitely needs to be a starter. <sighs> These middle linebackers are pitiful. I need to switch this defense. Right now, we're not utilizing our two amazing D tackles. Yeah, we have to switch this defense. Right now, we're in a 3-4 under. That's just not going to be it. We need to be in a 4-3. I don't know about quarters. Ooh, actually, I really like 4-6. We're just going to go in the base 4-3. Offensively, I'm going to go Kansas City. Get those stats for my tight end and my wide receiver. Casey's actually a really good play for us. The only thing is that your halfback isn't utilized that much, but I think Derrick Henry will be just fine. Oh, so Casey on offense, we're going to run a base 4-3. Doing a lot of these rebuilds has taught me a lot about this. I still don't know it perfectly, but what I do know is that in a 4-3, your pass rush is coming from your down linemen, like Christian Wilkins and Smoot. The linebackers play more of a traditional role. A lot of the times, we're going to have two D tackles in there, which is perfect because we have Vita Vea and Jordan Davis. To be honest, at some point, I may end up trading one of these guys, most likely Jordan Davis. The only reason I took him was because there was so much value at that at that position. I have no idea how he wasn't already taken. I don't know if Jordan Davis will make it all the way with us, but I'm just happy to have him on the team. I don't know how he fell to that slot. Ojolari, Jewel, and Leo Chanel are now in the correct spots. The linebackers look a little bit better like this. For the upcoming NFL draft after this season, I think I'm going to target a linebacker. That'd be nice. Or a left end, somebody who can pass rush really well. Potentially a corner too. And offensively, I don't think I'd draft offense. There's not something... there. No, I wouldn't draft offense. This team's way too good to be drafting offense. We got to go defense. The slot wide receiver always gets a ton of action. So I got to move DK Metcalf there. I wouldn't be shocked if DK Metcalf is a 96 or a 97 overall the end of this season like he's gonna be so good rush left end is christian wilkins well rush right end should actually be christian wilkins rush left end i guess i'll go to wayne smoot but yeah i really got to get a new player for that position rush d tackles vita vea and my slot corner is gonna be caleb farley i'm telling y'all if i can get caleb farley like superstar and higher overall he's gonna be so unbelievably good all right boys regular season week one let's take a look at this draft class because this is gonna be really important it's incredibly unlikely that we'll win the super bowl this year so we need to take a look at this i'm not gonna lie we're probably not gonna tank though either so we should target somewhere in the middle of the draft class at least tentatively cordell leonard out of notre dame a right outside linebacker don't know his archetype yet but yeah we do need backers we need linebackers bad there's a corner in here telvin proctor six foot out of oregon and there's a left end jose gentry and a right end george mills left outside linebacker d'angelo little and lots of corners look at that three corners in a row mike ford dylan strong jamal dane Bernard Beatty. This is really good for the positions we need. Looks like there's a lot of depth in that first round, so that's huge. My season goal for the Monarchs is seven wins. It's London's first football team. If they get seven wins in the first season, that's honestly impressive. I do need to get new scouts, though. I'm firing this QB scout and my D-tackle scout. I have both those positions, like, fully locked up. Most important position to me right now is corners and linebackers. I don't know if there's... Did any of you do that? Alessia Trenkel does corners and wide receivers. Calvin Heath is our guy. He does DNs and outside linebackers. That's our three-star scout, so he gets the biggest scouting boost. Definitely want him. And then for our two-star, we'll take anybody who does corners. <laughs> Prime time. Look at that. Deion Sanders is an available scout. Corners and wide receivers. That's actually perfect. The big one's going national, and then whatever's left is prime time, right? The scouting system is so mid. It's so unbelievably mid. You could make this so much better, EA, and you know it. Oh, and we went 1-0. Our very first game, we beat the Rams. I just wanted to see our first game. We went 1-0. Let's sim to midseason. Oh my god, we're actually doing so well. At midseason, we're 4-2. We're about to take on the Browns. Got an 87 offense and 81 defense. And it looks like we got a weekly award for somebody. Kirk Cousins. Holy shit. Let's go. He's playing out of his mind. Did we get any other weekly awards? Kirk Cousins has got it twice now. Dude, he's playing so well. Trevor Lawrence looks like he's going off. Look at this. T-Law, 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 T-Law. Aaron Jones, T-Law, Kyler Murray. Oh my God. T-Law is going stupid in the AFC. We might end up seeing the Bills. We might end up seeing the Bills in the playoffs. And if I look around the league, looks like T-Law leads in yards, then Stroud, then Purdy. Oh my God. Receiving leaders, Garrett Wilson, Zach Ertz, Bateman. None of our guys on any of these lists, unfortunately. Yeah, tr truly none of our guys on any of these lists. Darn. Hey, 4-2 is not bad though. My national scouting position is actually going to be corners. Looks like I'm having a pretty good year. We're 4-2 right now. We're going to end up probably in the 18 to 30s 
for our picks. And there's a lot of corners in that range. So we're going to set national to corners. Get as much info on the corners as we can. And hopefully draft an absolute stud. Let's head to the playoffs, boys. There's no way the Monarchs are going in their first year, right? You know, I'm saying that I drafted my whole team. It's not like we have a horrible team, but I drafted using a jersey sales list. Oh my God. Oh my God. We went 11 and 6 with Perk Duggins. We got more weekly awards. Is it Kirk again? Dude, I, oh, it's not. It's Josie Jewel with 15 tackles and an interception in week 18. Mike Hughes got it the week before that with six tackles, an interception, and a touchdown. Oh, my God. Derrick Henry got it in week 13. We are all over the place. 15 carries, 137 rush yards. He got it back-to-back. -back. And Dwayne Smoot had three sacks. Oh my God, why can't every, dude, why can't every rebuild be this easy? This is nuts. Dude, I did a Rams rebuild. It took me 11, what did it take me? Eight years to win it? This is insane. I'm so excited about this. The first of many, let's talk about our very first playoff game. We're taking on the Carolina Panthers. We're gonna play it cool. We're in London. This is our first time. We're not gonna be cocky. You know, tea and crumpets, biscuits and gravy, uh, Eiffel Tower and the Queen. Beat the Panthers for your staff points. Rule. Looks like Kirk Cousins has an upgrade. He deserves it. I can't believe it. Morales got him at a plus three overall here. Awareness, play action, throw accuracy mid. You know, I shouldn't be saying this about Kirk Cousins. His, statistically, he's actually a crazy good quarterback. He's got 99 play action. 90 plus in every throw stat. He's just old, so I don't really think about him a lot, but yeah, he's great. Brian Branch looks like he's been progressing super well. Little run support upgrade for him. Awareness, block, shed, pursuit, and tackle. He's uh, He is looking really, really good. Caleb Farley gets an upgrade too. I'll go auto on these guys. Well, let's take a look around the league. Oh my God. <laughs> Kirk Cousins is second in the league in passing yards. And Derrick Henry's fifth. This is truly the best sim I've ever... What? I'm actually, I'm like legitimately almost mad at how well this went. Dude, these are usually so hard. Kirk Cousins is second in the league. J Dude, he's just barely under T-Law. That's actually so cool because Trevor Lawrence always plays in London too. This is a true London rebuild video. So Kirk Cousins did amazing. And this is the first time ever with Chiefs Playbook to have a running back in the top five. I have never had a running back in the top five with Chiefs Playbook. Not only that, but he had 20 touchdowns. That might be... It's tied for the most in the league. It's tied with Nick Chubb. I think what's more impressive, though, is his average yards per carry. He's got 60 less carries than Chubb, but he almost got it. So Cooper Cup, okay, let's not count that. That's a jet sweep. Who, is, who realistically has the most yards per carry as a running back? I think it's going to be Derrick Henry. It is. Derrick Henry has the most yards per carry in the league. Okay, technically. I mean, are we counting Tank Bigsby's one carry the entire season for six yards? Are we counting Jimmy Garoppolo's two rushes? Okay. Receiving. Let's see how the Monarchs did. He came Metcalf with 1,200 on 10 touchdowns. Not gonna lie. That is an underwhelming season on Chiefs playbook with how well we did. I thought he would go 1,500 for sure. Really, it's Derrick Henry who did way better than anticipated. Hawkinson does not reach 1,000 but gets nine touchdowns. That's great. Jefferson weirdly got a lot of reps. He was at wide receiver three and he was not at slot, but he just got a lot of passes. Even Derrick Henry got a good amount of patches. And then uh, Olamide Zacchaeus, he got he got in the end zone. Along with Benny Snell, he found his way into the end zone. Then defensively, Josie Jewell looks like our middle linebacker gets a lot of use, which makes sense. It makes me think I want a different guy in there, but maybe not. Maybe he is our guy. He's not that old. Uh, had nine TFLs, one and a half sacks, and three interceptions. Seven sacks for Christian Wilkins, exactly what we want. Six for Vita of a uh, five and a half for Dwayne Smoot. This dude is going nowhere on this franchise. He's 28, six years of experience, normal dev. I would call those wasted stats. We want those sacks going to like Jordan Davis or really anyone else. Gosh, do I move Jordan Davis to right end? Dude, we didn't use Jordan Davis at all. I guess he got six TFLs. I got to trade Jordan Davis. I wasted Jordan Davis's talent. I really did. I, I just shouldn't have picked him. Especially with having Vita Vea. Hey, we don't got to worry about that right now. We'll worry about those trades and such after this game here against the Panthers. I, I actually think we have a decent chance to win this. We're a higher overall. We're a better seed. Oh my gosh, wait. That's not actually the Panthers. Wait, I got to scout the roster. I was expecting to see Bryce Young and Brian Burns. Every time we play a team, we got to see their roster. I'm excited about this. So what do the new look Panthers have? Their best player is Christian McCaffrey, 99 overall. Then Minka, Tua, Kyle Hamilton, Xavier Howard, Evan Engram, Hollywood, Okarike, Armstead, Brandon Cooks, Havenstein, Ben Powers, Jamin Davis, Okoronkwo, 
Ernest Jones. That's a good team. And McCaffrey Minka. That's a, that's some solid picks right there. The London Monarchs in their first ever playoff game. Wait, do we have alternate unis? No way we have alternate unis. Holy fuck, we have alternate unis. Oh my God, let's go. The alternate Monarch unis, bring them out. Super wild card weekend to a tongue of Iloa. You know, the reports came out that he almost didn't update his passport and he might not have been able to play in this game. Luckily, they expedited it and two is able to play. They flew across the pond to London's futuristic stadium. All right, so I'm gonna sim this. If it becomes a close game, we'll watch in. But right now, Carolina's got 10 Monarchs are on the board. Seven to 10, no scoring right now. 10 to 10, 17, 10, 20 to 10. Oh no, don't fall short, Monarchs. Oh my God, all of London is here to watch and we are getting our asses handed to us on a silver platter with tea and crumpets. Holy shit, cleaning up pocket, Kirk? Laser, just kidding. I thought that was a nuke. I like the idea, but that's a turnover. Holy shit, Minka, McCaffrey, and Tua on the Panthers bullying us. And we're punting here. We're just conceding the game. That's crazy. Yeah, this one's a blowout. Holy shit, could you guys like fuck off? Oh my God, that's actually so embarrassing. It's our first, it's our first season as a franchise. They dropped 48 on us in London. <laughs> That's fucked up. That's fucked up. Tua had an almost perfect QBR. 19 for 25 on three touchdowns. Kirko, Perk Duggins didn't throw a single touchdown. Two interceptions. Yikes. McCaffrey was insane. Derrick Henry was really good too. Honestly, he's like the only bright spot on this team. We struggled so bad. Sheesh, boys. Well, that's a bummer. Hey, it happens, boys. Let's get ready for next season. I've already got my sights set on the draft and probably trading Jordan Davis. 90 mil available in cap space. Wow, that's... We have 90 mil available in cap space. Free agency. Which one of you fine gentlemen would like to pack up your bags and move your entire family to London? Oh my God, wait a minute. This is a fantasy draft, so there's gonna be nobody in free agency other than Jonathan Jones, who is a superstar? Why are you in free agency? Okay, well, first and foremost, let's get an awesome kicker and I'm trying to get gay with it, man. Matt Gay wants to get gay in London. Hell yeah, I'm gonna make him a player-friendly offer. And low-key, I'm picking up Jonathan Jones. I don't even know how he ended up in free agency this year. You know, player-friendly two-year deal. Uh, hopefully he sticks around. He's not gonna get any better, but my corners do need help. Cam Taylor Britt, Caleb Farley, Mike Hughes. Mm, maybe not. Actually, no, let's do it. He's good. He'll help out right now. I'm just gonna save our money, man. There's nobody we want other than really a kicker in free agency, which makes sense. Sorry, guys. I'm really not used to the fantasy draft aspect of this. Before the draft starts, let's see what we can turn Jordan Davis into. Just too much wasted talent on this team. He's a super young superstar. He's probably worth a lot. There's no way the Bears give me round one pick one for Jordan Davis, right? That wouldn't make any sense. <laughs> They didn't even really consider that. We have round one pick 24. They're not really considering that either. Packers have round one pick four and they want to de-tackle. Is this still aggressive? Yeah, it's still aggressive. Jordan Davis for the Giants round one pick 17. I might be fleecing myself. Hold up. It remains to be seen if this was a good call, but here's the trade I made. Jordan Davis, this year's second, next year's second. I said that wrong. This year's third and fourth, next year's second, and the year after that second with Jordan Davis for the Giants first round pick this year. That's round one pick 17. 17. I think on paper, I gave up way too much for that. But the fact that we're already 11 and six, and I'm gonna get a really, really, at least hopefully really, really good player out of this. We'll see if it pays off. Round one pick 17. This is what we just got off the Giants for Jordan Davis. We traded a superstar D tackle for this pick. So we really need to get something good out of it. I didn't think this would be available, but Cordell Leonard, who is the best outside linebacker available, is still available. So he is a speed rusher, which is not the archetype we're looking for he has elite speed though elite speed great jumping great strength great excel this guy's a freak that's actually really good skills wise block shedding's okay finesse is crazy good hit power his man coverage is still really good he could be a true linebacker a pursuit c tackle c zone coverage he could be a true linebacker too damn this guy really wasn't on my radar but i think we take him here cordell leonard the lefty out of notre dame i'm taking him he's gotta be hitting them yes
So here's the thing. Speed rushing outside linebacker technically should be rushing the quarterback, and we're at a 4-3. Ah, but I don't have Jordan Davis anymore. I could switch back to a 3-4. Either way, 86 speed, 89 acceleration. 80, he's really, really good. That's going to be a high overall linebacker. Jose Gentry goes next, and that's actually a bummer. I was hoping he might fall all the way to me, but that's okay. We get round one, pick 24 here. Who are we going to take? The next best edge rusher, and the guy I was kind of looking at is Nate Booker, and he is still available here. The good news is his rank has changed nine over the season, so he's gone up, which is a good thing to see. Physicals, great speed, good strength, great acceleration. And then skills-wise, okay, this guy's going to come out the gates being really good. A power moves, A block shedding. That has a high overall as well. This is probably a 75 overall Ooh, if he's normal dev in 75 that's still okay so i think i do draft him here also hidden dev good so we got two hidden devs outside linebacker and right end this first round of this draft was exactly what we were looking for so far now let's see if we can pick up some absolute steals in these later rounds i honestly want a corner here because I didn't sign a corner in free agency, and I don't think my corner three being Mike Hughes is all that great. Johnny Frazier's got elite speed. Elite? Whoa, wait, no, he's got great speed, elite jumping. Solid acceleration, pretty good skills. 5'11 out of Notre Dame. It's another Notre Dame guy, huh? We're really just hoping he's hidden dev. Oh, he's like... It's actually such a good corner on paper. Shoot. Normal dev Johnny Frazier. I guess he could be high overall. We'll still put him in the lineup, but really looking for hidden dev there. Round three, pick 24. I think I'm going to go for a wide receiver here since that's one of the few positions that still has some availability. Take a look at Randy Verdon first and foremost with elite change of direction, solid speed, great excel skills don't look too good then there's jalen boston out of fresno state 6-2 a lot of goods no greats no elites jalen boston is a bust he's got bust lit written all over him paul dillard out of akron nah i think that first guy was the move yep it's randy verdon randy verdon's gonna be our pick out of oregon he's just gotta be hitting dev that's what we need out of randy verdon well, I'm, fucking, I'm a whiff machine right now. My first round was immaculate, and now I'm a whiff machine. I always whiff on wide receivers. I never draft good wide receivers. I'm going to let the CPU take over for the rest of this draft here. It's really, look, the most important thing is our two picks in the first round, though. I am a little sad about those whiffs, but two hidden devs in the two positions I need the most, we're just fine. The draft recap, baby, the most important parts. Hey, hey. Yo, yeah, Johnny Frazier's a 76 overall normal dev. That's wild. And then same with Verdon. Verdon's a 74, but he's normal dev. Johnny Frazier's 100% getting reps, even though he's normal dev. So that's not as big of a whiff as I thought. Nate Booker's a 76. He's super good. Cornell Leonard, definitely a little lower than I thought he would be. But for linebackers, that's really high overall. If you guys will notice, it's kind of position based on how high the overalls are. So halfbacks and corners tend to be really high overalls, like out the gates. Whereas like linebackers, edge rushers, not so much. And actually, I'll prove that right now. Let's go look at the entire NFL for this draft class. And let's just sort by overall. Round two pick eight safety was the highest overall player in the draft. Cedric Richardson. Then it's Sammy Birch, wide receiver. He was round one pick one. He's in hard 80. Then it was Telvin Proctor, round one pick nine, 80. Justin Peppers, also an 80. Dalton Green. Now let's see if we whiffed, actually. I got to see if we whiffed based on where we picked. So with round one, pick 17, we took Cordell Leonard, our outside linebacker, and we could have taken Jose Gentry, who's also a 75. So Booker, who we took, was actually a higher overall. So, so far, we did really, really good here. Uh, who do we miss on? Missed on a 78 overall corner, Bernard Beatty. He, he does look like a stud, but I can't say I would have taken that over the linebacker. Dude, Cedric Richardson. Safeties weren't on my radar because I got Brian Branch and Petrie, but wow, that guy's a monster. This is low-key, like, I mean, I did make, I made the setting strong, but still, this wasn't that strong of a draft class. Solid draft, super solid draft. I'm not mad about that at all. I got tons of super good defensive players. Let's go adjust that in the depth chart and let's have an awesome season here. I'm still putting Randy Verdon in because in the long run, he will be better than Von Jefferson. I do not like Von Jefferson. Hawkinson's. Oh, I haven't even looked at my team yet. Oh, shit. I haven't looked at how well my team's progressed or if we got dev trade upgrades yet. That's crazy that I haven't done that yet. Osiris Torrance is in and then my right tackle. Oh, we don't have a right tackle. Holy shit. I guess the rookie that they drafted is going in. Isaiah Fisher. Sorry, Leo Chanel. It's Cordell Leonard season. Then CTB Farley. Then Mike Hughes comes out for Johnny Frazier. That's a football name. Johnny Frazier. That guy can play. Yo! Dev traits? Dude, old ass Kirk Cousins got a dev trait upgrade. 
Also, somehow Vita Vea can be fullback? You bet your ass Vita Vea is my fullback. How is that possible? I don't care. I don't care how it's possible. It's happening. Isaiah Fisher's in. Hawkinson got superstar after an amazing season. Wow, Hawkinson went all the way up to a 93 overall in that one season. Sheesh. DK Metcalf's moved up as well. He's a 93. Derrick Henry, un unwavering. He might have even got a little bit worse. And then defensively, who got an upgrade? Anybody here? Doesn't look like anybody got a depth trade upgrade. No, nobody did. But I do like how this team looks now with Johnny Frazier, with Nate Booker, with Leonard. All right, gentlemen, the Monarchs are an 85 overall going into their second season. Last year, we were four and two at midseason and we ended 11 and six. That does mean our schedule this season will be a little bit harder, but still, we've only really gotten better. I imagine we'll have a similar record. I'm gonna say three and three. We're three and three at midseason. I stand corrected. We're four and three. Christian Wilkins is third on sack leaders. We don't have anyone else on any other list, but this was the same thing halfway through the season last year too. Kirk Cousins wasn't even on here. And then all of a sudden, he just started going off. Let's head to the playoffs, see if we make it. What? Oh my God, look at this. Wait, we had such a horrible stretch down that last. Oh no, we didn't make the playoffs. Look at this. So after the midseason break, we went 0-35 against the Bills. Smack the, that Bills team is crazy. Lost, one against the Packers, one. Lost, win, win, loss, lost. Wow, we went 0-35. Wow. Eight and nine. And you know, eight and nine for some teams maybe could make the playoffs, but it looks like our division's actually really tough. 12 and five Rams, 11 and six Cardinals, 10 and seven Niners. So the NFC West has only winning records. That is a little scary. But the good news is since we were eight and nine, our draft pick will be a little more valuable this season. Mahomes threw for 5,000 yards. Kirk Cousins still gets fourth in the NFL, a slight regression. We did play a little bit worse this season than last season. Jelani Matthews, the rookie, is third. Oh my God. Uh, rushing, where do we find ourselves here? Looks like there's a regression from Derrick Henry too. 1,311 touchdowns, still a really good season. Metcalf, 1,200. Verdon, 1,000. Randy Verdon with 1,005 touchdowns. Potential, no, he can't win offensive rookie of the year because that quarterback, that Packers quarterback had to have won it, right? Defensively, Jewel, another great season. Looks like Christian Will, ooh, whoa! Vita Vail with 14. Wilkins with 12. Nate Booker, the rookie, eight and a half. That is probably defensive rookie of the year, but we'll have to see. Aziz Ojolari had five himself too. Uh, look at the TFLs though, 2018-14. Nice. Let's take a look at the yearly awards, though. This is really important for us for getting those dev trade upgrades. So we're technically in the NFC. Oh, Vita Vea's second in defensive play of the year. It goes to Alex Highsmith. That's a weird one. Offensive rookie of the year is, is Jeff Jeffrey's son. You know, EA, you should really just take that last name out. You're just asking for trouble. Jeffrey's son, Mitchell, gets offensive rookie of the year, followed up by Rod Katz, then Randy Verdon, and then Jonathan Gardner. Oh, yeah, I guess he threw a lot of interceptions. Defensive Rookie of the Year, not Nate Booker. It's going to be Carl Fant. Damn. You're this close on both of them. But honestly, that's okay because both of our picks were late in the first round. If I had like round one pick one, it's kind of where you hope to get it. Also, I apologize. I didn't show you the outcome of last season. Let me let me show you that right now. I don't even know what it is. Uh, Buccaneers win the Super Bowl. Devin Bush wins Super Bowl MVP. Defensive Rookie of the Year is Byron Young. Offensive Rookie of the Year is Bijan Robinson. Offensive Player of the Year last year was Derek Henry, that's awesome. Dude, I'm telling you, that Bills team is gonna be some menaces. So they win the Super Bowl. T-Law wins MVP. Yeah, that's a scary team. Epstein's son wins offensive rookie of the year. Oh my God. Free agency this year is a little more stacked. Although I can't say I really need any of these positions either. This is actually an insane signing. I don't know if we... We have the cap space for it. He just really doesn't want to play for us. Makai Becton, that would be a huge pickup. Because we whiffed on right tackle and we really need one. I'm going to go very player friendly. This is going to be an aggressive overpay for a right tackle. But dude, if we could pick him up. I'm going to give him a 15 mil bonus. We have 108 mil in cap space though. It would not be a bad call. Absolutely diabolically massive offer for Makai Becton. Um, let's use the eval period. Yeah, we have the strongest offer right now. Oh. <laughs> Yo, Mackay Becton really did not want to go to London, but we did secure him. That's huge to get him in free agency. Not sure I really need to go for anything else here. Yeah, I'm chilling. All right, well, that was actually an amazing free agency grab. That's exactly what we were looking for there. And now we can just get ready for the draft. 
Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, so Isaiah Fisher had a horrible season. That's okay. We signed Makai Becton. Hawkinson is X Factor now. But dude, look at the regression on Kirk. Holy shit. Kirk was just an 85 overall. We got to draft the quarterback this year. We have to draft the quarterback. We don't have a choice. Oh, Vita Vea is now a superstar X Factor too, which is kind of hilarious. Christian Wilkins is superstar. Nate Booker is superstar. Leonard is star. Huge. Okay, so awesome season. Wow, and Josie Jewel leaves in free agency. So our new middle linebacker is Jack Gibbons. Okay. I don't even know where he came from. Must have been like the CPU somehow. Our pick is round one, pick 14, and Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins is already out of the picture. My favorite. Favorite quarterback right now is this guy, Leonard Burr. Physicals, I just, how much does this matter? He has poor speed, poor excel. Yeah, but he's a quarterback, right? Elite strength, elite throw power. That's what I like. And then skills wise, Hitch is the highest out of all these guys that I've seen. He's got the most consistent A's. So I feel like he's going to be a good overall. His juke move is horrible. That doesn't matter. His spin move is horrible. That doesn't matter. Stiff arm sucks. That doesn't matter. But his throw under pressure is good. Short accuracy A, deep accuracy A, medium A to C. There are a lot of quarterbacks, but a lot of them are good. At least it looks like it. I'm going Leonard. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. That's Kirk Cousins' replacement right there. It might be a while till we win a Super Bowl. Now that I think about it, because we just lost our starting quarterback. He's only getting worse. I'm replacing him with Leonard Burr, who's going to need some time himself to develop. Ooh, this might be tougher than I thought. I thought we were kind of close, but now I'm starting to think this might be tougher than we thought. Um, Our next pick's not till round three, pick 14. Here's a tight end, Alex Hurst. No, I got Hawkinson. It's kind of a weird pick here, but I'm taking Ezekiel Ross, middle linebacker out of Wisconsin. <sighs> Maybe not. He doesn't look good enough. I need a linebacker. I'm going to take Adam Porter out of USC. I'm running out of clock. Oh my God. What a fucking snipe. 87 speed, 90 excel. So he's a right outside linebacker, but I'm going to move him to middle linebacker and he's a perfect build for it. This isn't out of the question. He's a run stopper already, which is exactly what I want at middle linebacker. 87 speed, 90 excel is nuts. For some reason, this guy looks like he's 85 years old. Oh, but his stats are amazing. This might have been a huge steal. This very well could have been a massive steal steal and as always i like to let the cpu take a couple picks so both our picks looked like they were good we got a hidden dev quarterback a hidden dev middle linebacker and cpu will take over for the rest kirk cousins that was kirk cousins last season i didn't realize how hard he'd regress he went from an 85 overall down to a 76 minus nine overall in one season that is so tough time for the most fun part the draft Recap! Hey, we like to see that. 70 plus, just no big whiffs. So Leonard Burr's a 75 overall. That almost matches Kirk Cousins already. So that's amazing. And hopefully he's a superstar, superstar X Factor, but that remains to be seen. Adam Porter, the outside linebacker, is a 74. And is, oh my God, we ended up getting Ezekiel Ross also. That's who I was going to take. I, I couldn't have gone wrong. I actually couldn't have gone wrong. I got Ezekiel Ross and Adam Porter. I still think Adam Porter's better. Gosh, that's probably why I should have drafted not the CPU. I just didn't expect them both to be available. What is your overall at middle linebacker? Because I'm going to move him to middle linebacker. Hicks goes down in overall. I still like him better, though. Got too many middle linebackers now. And then we whiff on tight end, left outside linebacker, and then tight end once again. Let's see what the entire draft class looked like. Highest overall being an 80. Mitchell Hall. Next best was Akeem Williams. Then Terrell Riley. Austin Coleman. Juan Seymour was round one pick one. Round one pick 25 corners is a stud. Looks like we did good with our pick. Now, let me let me start by picks now. So we are round one pick 14 and we take Leonard Burr. The next quarterback taken is William Snell, who's a 76 overall. So he's slightly better. Um, who's the next quarterback taken? No, I think that's all the quarterbacks that I wanted. Fastest guy in the class was Harvey Jones. I swear the, the fast hatbacks always have that face scan. That wasn't an entirely stacked class either, even though I went strong on all positions again. All right, coming off an eight and nine season, headed into year three, got a way better right tackle, got some X factor receiving threats for our new quarterback, Leonard Burr, and Kirk Cousins is now out of the picture. Randy Verdon, still normal dev, would love to get him to star. Lots of threats though. And then defensively, we got Adam Poor. We got two hidden dead middle linebackers. Kind of goofed on that. Kind of need a better D tackle too, but I'm chilling for now with what we got. DBs are looking better. Safeties are looking nice. Linebackers are looking nice. Oh, would you look at that? Where do we find ourselves, gentlemen? We find ourselves 11 and 6 once again, except a way higher overall this time around. Um, And we did this with our rookie. Yo, wait a minute. We get to see the exact upgrade that takes DK to a 99 overall. This is sick. 
So it did take three years, though. It took three full seasons to get DK to a 99. Medium, release, short, and stiff arm. But that makes sense. The higher overall you start at, the more experience it takes to go up. 99 is not easy. 96 speed, 99. Jesus. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a good that's a good wide receiver. Nate Booker is up to an 86 already. He is quickly becoming a force in the league. Superstar power rusher with 95 power moves. Oh, yeah. Cam Taylor Britt. Cam Taylor Britt was a very good pickup. He's already, he might be our best DB right now. At least highest overall. Wow, well, we're 11 and six. That's amazing. Let's take a look. Oh my God, I just saw Leonard Burr at third. No way the rookie did that. 46 touchdowns. Four, oh my God, you might be in the MVP running. He's not going to win MVP, but geez, for a rookie? He might have been superstar X Factor then. He might, wait a minute, wait a minute. What? He was star dev and he did all that? I just thought like he must have progressed like crazy. Wow, I mean, his stats are really, really good. He's slow, good excel with some really good accuracies. Wow, we found our new franchise quarterback in Leonard Burr. 46 and 14. Lamar had a 33 and 1 season. And then Mahomes 40 and 9. So yeah, most touchdowns in the league gotta be, yeah, by far. Damn, what a season. So who caught all those passes? It's gotta be DK for a lot of them, right? Rushing, Derrick Henry had 1,412. Another amazing season for him. DK, see, this is the season I thought DK had had first time around. 1,386 and 20. Hawkinson, 947, 11. Hardman, 857 and 3. Randy Verdon, 768 and 3. So Verdon's probably never going to dev up, but we got DK Metcalf, so who really cares? Defensively, it's Adam Porter with 128 tackles. That might be probably not the most in the league, but that's got to be a lot. Yeah, he's in the top. Oh, I think he just barely misses the top 10, which is actually a bummer because I think if you're in the top 10, you can, you can get dev trade upgrades. Six TFLs, though, for him. And then on the sacks chart, we got a lot less sacks this year. Christian Wilkins with 10 and a half. Vita Vea with 5. Ojalar with 4. Booker with 4. Three and a half for Cordell Leonard. Who had interceptions? Anybody? Wow, we barely intercepted. Three for Cam Tilly Britt, two for Brian Branch, one for Farley, Frazier, Porter, Petrie. Well, let's take a look at this Saints roster who we're taking on. They have a losing record, but they did make the playoffs, which was about it's the same record we have. We didn't make it, but they have a whoa. 99 Josh Jacobs, Andrew Thomas, Devontae Adams, Denzel Ward. This is a weird team. Who is your quarterback? Damian Rushing is an X-Factor D tackle. There's Bernard Beatty, who was a really good corner in last year's draft. I see Michael Mayer, dude. Who is your quarterback? Jordan Love. Oh, I must have passed him. Okay, this is actually a very good team. I can't take this team lightly. Let's see if we get our first playoff win here. 90 overall Saints taking on the 90 overall London Monarchs. How do they have home field advantage at 8-9? and nine? I'm so confused. Maybe it's not real home field advantage. I guess it's a playoff game. Come on, boys. Come on, boys. That's not good. 7-0 to start. Hey, seven of our own. A stop. Another one. Another three. Another touchdown. 17 to 17 and a half. Holy shit. 20 to 17. Wait a minute. We got to watch. 20 to 17 and it's Monarch's ball. Yeah, the Saints got home field advantage with a record of eight and nine. Yikes. Down goes the rookie. Quiddy Pay gets home. Fourth and 36. Not exactly what you're looking for. On the next Saints drive, they do score, but we score right back. Oh, shit. There's so much going on. 27-24. It's first and 10 Saints ball. Holy shit. Two-minute warning coming up. This is big. Huge, in fact. Where's he go? Checks down. Rocked. Oh, Leo, what are you doing in? You're not supposed to be in. Should be Adam Porter, but whatever. I see Adam Porter in the middle, number 40. Laser from Jordan Love. Good defense. CTB. Jordan Love doing a little hobble. You, you pull a hamstring? What was that, Jordan Love? Drops back, throws over the middle. Caught. Damn. Dude, this is actually a huge drive right here. Are they going to convert this all the way? He's got the check down. Yep, he sees it. And they get out of bounds to stop the clock. I mean, a field goal takes us to OT. But look at our D lineman. It looks strong. Heaves one. That was... He almost got that. Nate Booker. Get home, Nate Booker. Look at Nate Booker. He's so ready. I don't know what Vita Vey is doing out there at edge rusher, but whatever. First and 10. Oh, God. Are they going to settle for the field goal? Dude, we got to get we gotta get some pressure on the QB. Sack him. Throws over the middle. Broken up. Nice. They're in field goal range right now, though, so there's only so much we can do here. We could sack him like twice and pull him out of field goal range. Get home. Somebody get home. <gasps> Intercepted by Johnny Frazier. Oh my God. Johnny Frazier with the... Oh my God. Just kept the playoffs alive. Johnny Frazier made a massive play there. And now it's going to be all Derrick Henry and Makai Becton on that right side. It was a bizarre run. He had the angle. I'm not sure why he ran it like that, but it doesn't matter. I, I think we kind of closed the game up here anyway. They only have one more timeout. There goes Derrick Henry again, and we're in victory formation on third and seven. So I guess we're kneeling here and then punting. That's so weird. Why would you not run the ball one more time to potentially get the first? Why even allow them 
London coach thinks this is rugby, I guess. Although I'll be honest, I don't know the rugby rules. Dude, they're so close to field goal range already. 10 seconds, no timeouts. They'd have to throw like a deep corner or something. And I'll be honest, the Madden Sim is not very good at this. What? Trying that motherfucker out right now? Wait a minute. So we really just, we took a kneel knowing that we could punt them right into field goal range? How deep is this fucking field goal? That's a 66 yard, no 64. That's a 64 yard field goal. What did that hit? What did that hit? That was Evan McPherson. What did that hit? Did it hit the left? Oh my God. He smacked the bottom left corner. That's crazy. Okay, maybe my London coach is actually just galaxy brain. Dude, the next time I see a punter in free agency though, I'm picking them up because wow, that actually comes in so big. I don't even know who our punter is right now because I ignored that position. Holy shit. A narrow victory in the wild card. I'm not gonna lie though. If it was that close in the wild card, I don't see this going too well against the 13 and four Dallas Cowboys. Hey, I gotta believe. Cowboys roster has three 99s. Patrick Mahomes, Jesse Bates, Brandon Ayuk. And then it's Montez Sweat, Foyu Saddle, Luicon, and it, there's actually a really big drop off. You go 99 down to 91, but this is a crazy good team. They even got an, a superstar right guard from the draft and a superstar center from the draft. Jesus. Yeah, Cowboys roster's looking nice. Let's uh, let's try and dethrone them here. Come on, cowgirls. You ain't never seen this London meet before. It is seven to zero, Dallas. It is 14 to zero, Dallas. 14, seven, hope is alive. 21, seven, Dallas, 21, 14, 21, 21. 24-21. Wait just a minute. First and 10. Cowboys up by three. Mahomes is going to hand this off. And how did you bounce off that hit? This game is winnable. This game is very winnable. Take the handoff. Wow. That offense killed me. Nice play. Ooh. Second and 10. Coming around. Oh, what a laser. Mahomes is too good, man. Do we make it past the cowgirls? I don't think so, to be honest. They're milking that clock. Mahomes is hanging out. We're not getting a lot of pass rush. Oh, <laughs> that was a scary ball. CTB almost could have came down with that. Second and 10, they are going to hand this one off. I keep thinking that's Tony Pollard because I just see Cowboys. It's Khalil Herbert though. Oh no, this will go two minute warning. Shit. They might literally just milk. They might be able to milk this whole clock and beat us. Guys, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to get so fucking aggressively high after this rebuild. Mm. Big TFL. I don't want to get high right now, though. I'm going to mess up the video. I don't know if any of you care. Why? Dude, second and 10 in an obvious run situation. How does a stretch run go for 20 yards? Like, what defense are we calling there? Now they can literally just run hatback dive, hatback wham until the game's over. Another massive TFL from 57. Is that Nate Booker? I think it is. I think that's Nate Booker both times there, but this, the defensive play calling is so whack right now. Third and 14, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's third and 14. There'll be 20 seconds left when we get this ball. No timeouts, unless they pass here. If they pass here and throw incomplete, which I kind of think they're doing. Oh no, they are handing up. Stuffed. Stuffed. Fourth and 13, there will be... It would take a miracle. It would take a miracle. It would certainly help if he shanked this. Not going to shank a 39 yarder. I just watched McPherson almost drill a 64. He's going to pin this. Yeah. All right. Cowboys pin the field goal from Kaimi Fairbairn. I have personally witnessed a kick return before from my team to win the game. So, not going to rule it out. Go Monarchs. Oh my God. Holy shit. He almost looked like he was going to do that. Yo, low key, there's 18 seconds. I don't know if the rookie's got this in him because not only do we got to... No, it's it's a touchdown. Sorry, I'm thinking of a field goal. No, we have to get a touchdown. You have to get so fucking unbelievably lucky. And that is not how you're going to do it. Gigantic heave from Leonard Burr threw that directly to the ref. Actually, I thought the ref was going to catch that. It's probably our second to last play here. Unless he throws inbounds like an idiot. Don't you dare check down right now. That's what I want to see. I want you to chuck fucking piss missiles at DK Metcalf and just pray. I got to say, though, three straight uncatchable balls. Just a weird strategy. Burr's going to drop back. <laughs> the rookie with a pitiful final three plays. And the Cowboys come up on top. Hey, I tell you what, we're inching our way, though. We went wild card, got knocked out. Then we beat the wild card. We go to the divisional, get knocked out. So now, my hopes is next season we'll make it to at least the championship and hopefully win it from there. Not gonna lie though, Leonard Burr had a really good game. 123.1 QBR, actually outplayed Mahomes. Three touchdowns, no interceptions. Um, Khalil Herbert, honestly, was a difference maker though. Look at how many runs he had. And they must have done something defensively, like turn us over somehow. 
12 tackles for Caleb Farley. I don't know why Leo Chanel keeps getting so many reps. He's not in at any of my linebacker positions. Lost to the Cowboys here. That's okay. Let's regroup for next season, baby. We're going. We're, we're looking good. Super Bowl ended up being the Rams versus the Jets. T-Law won MVP of the league. David Long wins it in the Super Bowl. Amon Ross St. Brown Offensive Player of the Year. Leonard Burr, Monarchs. Leonard Burr wins Offensive Rookie of the Year. So he was star dev. He will now be guaranteed a uh, superstar, 100%. Yep, Leonard Burr is now superstar. Derrick Henry's regressing. He is losing a step, man. 32 years in the league. You can just see it on his face. He's been in the league too long. But you know what? He's still an 87 overall, a superstar X-Factor. And he is still a tank. So I don't think we got to replace him yet. We got that hard 99 DK Metcalf. 85 and 80 at our other wide receivers, which isn't bad at all. Hawkinson's a 98. Unbelievably good. And defensively, Vita Vea is an X-Factor. Booker's superstar. Wilkins is superstar. Porter is a star along with Ross. Yeah, the boys are having a good season. How is Leo Chanel getting so many reps, though? Free agency. What is there? Justin Tucker is available. I actually, I would love Justin Tucker on this team. He's such a stud. Giving him a good custom offer, I don't think it'll matter. I probably could have given him a weaker offer. Tyron Smith's available. I mean, technically I could, but I don't think there's a huge need. I'm literally going to sign Logan Cook. I'm going to sign a punter. Yeah, I don't even have a, but this team doesn't even have a punter. It's Matt Gay is my punter. Holy shit, what an oversight. No wonder it was a horrible punt. Who is my left tackle? Yeah, Charles Cross. He's amazing. I don't need left tackle. Dude, I'm even going to sign fullback Patrick Ricard. Let's just get weird with it, man. We got money. London's London's got that London bread, man. We're fine. When I look at this team, low-key, it's so good. But we could use either a really elite player in the secondary or a really elite linebacker. I think I'm going to trade my first-round pick for one of those positions. So I drafted two great middle linebackers, right? We got Porter. We got Gibbons. And we have Ezekiel Ross. Let's see what we can get for Ezekiel Ross and a first round pick. Might even go a third as well. I want a really good middle linebacker. Jack Campbell, no. Devin White, no. I want 90 plus. They got to be an instant impact stud. Drew Sanders, Jerome Baker does look really good. Cole Holcomb's an X Factor? Okay, I want Nick Bolton. I love Nick Bolton. Nick Bolton is so good. I wonder if we could poach Nick Bolton off the Dolphins for a round one and Ezekiel Ross. We're close. Let's give him round three additionally. Wow, they highly value Nick Bolton. I'm okay with this. Okay, let's save our round three. Let's pick someone up on our own. Let's toss our five, our six, our seven, and next year's two. Wow. Okay, we'll go also our 2028 20, two. Dude, no way you value Nick Bolton that highly. Holy shit, the Dolphins know just how fucking goaded Nick Bolton is. Holy shit. The Dolphins really wanted to keep Nick Bolton. We made him an offer they couldn't refuse. Two seconds, two thirds, a first, and our star middle linebacker for Nick Bolton. We paid all of that for a plus 18 boost at middle linebacker. I don't think my trades this rebuild have been all too great, but my team is developed so well that I guess I can afford to make bad trades, but I still really, really like this. It's honestly the only thing that this team is missing is like a stud, stud middle linebacker. Make sure he is in as our primary sub middle linebacker. I'm so shocked that Bolton is not a superstar though. So the new addition, Nick Bolton in the middle, dude, he's so good though. 87 speed, 97 tackle, 85 block shed. He basically develops into like a short Fred Warner. <laughs> He's so sick. I think we are ready for a Super Bowl. This offensive line is excellent and developing really well. We really need the Super Bowl this year too because Derrick Henry is about to either retire or become like an 80 overall. Hawkinson and DK are like at their peak. Leonard's getting better. Leonard Burr is getting better, but Vita Vea is going to be out of here pretty soon too. Christian Wilkins is getting old. We got to win. Who are you? Who the fuck are you? Who is this? Trenton Holmes is a superstar? How? I can't justify using him, but where did you come from and how? <laughs> I think the CPU drafted me as a superstar linebacker. The CPU is drafting better than I am right now. Uh, We're going to start the draft. I don't really have any picks. I guess I have a round four. Actually, you know what? Let's, let's keep this simple, gentlemen. I'm going to let the CPU do this. Let's see the draft recap, though. That's always fun. Draft recap, baby. What do we get? A what? Wait, we got a sick DB. Not DB. We got a sick halfback. Dennis Downs? Oh, no. He's a normal dev. Also, he's bald as shit. He looks like he's 40. I do it with a 74 overall, I kind of thought. Then we got uh, Damian Walton. So, yeah, it might have been all normal devs on this draft. Devin Jenkins, also normal dev. And then Pierre Browning. 
Hidden Dev D tackle, 68 overall. You know, I usually don't check dev traits, but for this 68 overall D tackle in the seventh round that the CPU picked, I will check. He's a star. That's still pretty cool, though, to get that in the seventh round. Let's see what the entire draft class looked like, though. That's the important part. Was this a very strong class? An 82 overall corner, Clay Parsons, 281s, Callaway and Brian Coleman. Couple 80s, Vince Newhouse and Roosevelt Sharpton. Nothing too crazy, low key. Fastest guy in the draft? Damn. Chauncey Nash, round six, pick 28, 72 overall. 98 speed, 99 Excel. He's normal dev. But still, that guy's a demon. Next fastest was Clay Parson. Wow, that was an insane... Look at this, dude. Clay Parsons. Or Clay Parson. 97 speed, 95 Excel. That's a generational corner. I assume he's Superstar X Factor. If he's Superstar X Factor, that's a generational corner. Star? I'm shocked. That guy was a freak. Ah, it works for me. We skipped that draft. I would have had round one pick 20-ish. Uh, and we got Nick Bolton out of it. So I'm cool with this. I tell you what, though. That new D-tackle is going to get moved up in the depth chart. My backup D-tackle right now sucks and is normal dev. So we might as well get in the star dev. And my backup is Ben Walker out of Arkansas. So that is now going to become Pierre Browning out of Florida State. Congrats. Pierre Browning. So it looks like we got the buy in the wild card. But dude, look at the NFC West. Every single team in the NFC West has an absurd record. 11 and 6, 11 and 6, 11 and 6, 10 and 7. How does that happen? We have the best offensive points per game in the entire league. And most importantly, we got a buy in the playoffs and we're at 93 overall. So we got to look at these stats here. I think I just saw Leonard Burr third in the league in passing yards. So let me go Monarchs. So passing yards, Leonard Burr, 4,602. Not bad. Rushing Derrick Henry. Dude, he keeps killing it. Doesn't matter how old he gets. He's been doing great. Receiving Metcalf, 1247. Hawkinson, 1231. Hawkinson almost out received Metcalf for the first time. Damn, he's getting good. Verdon, 750 and Hardman, 730. Burden's, Burden's been okay. Defensively, Nick Bolton with 111 tackles, six TFLs, and two sacks. We had eight and a half out of Vita Vea, seven and a half out of Ojalari, seven for Nate Booker, five for Christian Wilkins, three and a half for Leonard. I do think the Nick Bolton signing was good, but we'll just have to see how impactful it is in the playoffs. That's where it really, really matters. Certainly didn't have any rookie of the years on this season since we had no rookies uh we do have some upgrades here leonard burr is gonna go up to an 88 overall i'm gonna give him field general actually he usually gives you just the accuracies accuracy mid accuracy short nice work yeah he's looking real good his short accuracy is actually not so great he's got a big fucking arm though with 98 throw power superstar 23 years old he's young he's gonna be young winning this super bowl that's my hope anyway looks like we're taking on the 10 and 7 green bay packers and we got an upgrade for the bye week how did we just get an upgrade in the bye week oh that might have been awards I, th I think that was awards so hawkinson must have finished really really well and, and trenton holmes has a new ability how did trenton holmes do anything trenton holmes <laughs> this guy dude i low-key should put this dude in for ojalari we'll just have to see how this season continues to progress but here's our lineup going into the playoffs we're looking crazy crazy good and morale is helping everyone morale is giving us some huge boosts right now Here's the Monarchs, by the way. 99 Metcalf, 99 Hawkinson. Bolton is now our third best player. Then Brian Branch, Vita Vea, Wilkins, Leonard Burr. You know, we're not even that, we're not that good on paper, but I guess neither are the Packers. 99 Roquan, 97 Lattimore, 94 Gonzo. Yo, they're all defense. Buda Baker, first offensive player is Joe Mixon. Then it's a solid O-line. They have Jelani Matthews. This was that, that rookie quarterback who threw for a crazy amount of yards a couple years ago. Obviously, he was a rookie at one point, but... Damn, he's 6'6". Six, six. That's a big boy. I'm not losing to Jelani Matthews. All right, I got Leonard Burr. I'm going to be just fine. 93 overall Monarchs against the 89 overall Green Bay Packers. Their top three is Roquan, Channing Carroll, and Will Stark. Opening drive. The Monarchs get three on a Justin Tucker field goal. Packers get the first touchdown. Monarchs return with a touchdown. Packers return with a field goal. We're all tied up. 17 to 10. 17 to 17. Oh no, it's third and 13. Monarchs ball. Come on, Burr. You got Hawkinson in single coverage. You got DK in single coverage. No! What are you doing? Rolling out of the pocket? I can't believe this. Hey, this is what I got a punter for, boys. That's why I went out there and got a punter. So we could actually punt the thing. That was a significantly better punt than we had last time. Nice work. Now we got to play some defense. Shit, it's 17 to 17. Here we go, Monarchs. Here we go, Monarchs. You got this. Gonna start out with a little... 
<gasps> Fumble! Second of 14. Let's go. The lights are too bright. Turn those lights off. It's too bright. It's Leonard Burr's game now. Get to the QB. Maybe not. Nice tackle. Adam Porter, my boy. Big stop right here. Closes up. Get the ball right back. Win this ball game. Get home. Somebody get home. Big stop. Adam Porter. Fourth and seven. Ball's right back in our hands. Oh, they've got a superstar punter. Hello? How do you have a superstar punter? God damn. That was a fucking rocket. First and 10. Two minutes, 14 seconds left. You don't have to pass. I mean, you can. Derrick Henry, nice hands, baby. He's got those old man hands. 17 to 17. It's first and 10. Got a little delay route, and he hits the delay route. Who is six? Is that? It's McCall Hardman. A lot of different... Oh, a slip screen. The old man hands. You can't stiff arm him. You're Derrick Henry. Dude, Derrick Henry really lost his step. I'm not, I'm not kidding. No, why are you passing here? Derrick Henry, you got to do it. That's not the same Derrick Henry. On third and one, you have Derrick Henry, and you decide to check down to him, and now we're having a punt off in the fourth quarter. Oh my God, we're having a fucking mid-off. He just ran for 50. Packers use their second to last timeout. He's gonna throw over the middle. Did I just get a DPI? He dove into that ball through my defender, and they're calling that defensive pass interference. They're almost in field goal range already. They need seven more yards for field goal range. Throws a laser beam, another breakup. That's Johnny Frazier on the defense. Nice work, third and 10. Wait a minute, one more stop here. They might actually punt it right back to us. Get home, Booker. Booker was right in his face. CTB just dropped him. Don't you dare do that no fly zone shit. Oh my God, they're punting it back to us. It is 17 to 17. Out of bounds at the 22. The Monarchs still have three timeouts. Don't you, don't you tell me we get a game winning drive right here. I'd be geeked. No way you're running it. There's a holding too. Dude, could the, could the refs fuck off? It's coach's fault for running the ball. You have three timeouts. It's Hawkinson again. This is crazy. We're gonna end the divisional with three timeouts. You know how infuriating that is? Oh my God. We're headed to overtime. Packers win the toss. Remember kids, this is new playoffs NFL rules. So even if the Packers score on this opening drive, I'm given an opportunity to score myself. First and 10, the first play of overtime. Handoff, Joe Mixon going absolutely nowhere. Second and seven, we gotta get a sack though. Gotta get to the quarterback. Mixon, another one. Hey, that's 30 inches. Jesus. Oh, it's a pass. Oh, he got rocked, but he caught it. Yeah, they're faking it. Nick Bolton drops back. <gasps> Adam Porter! Oh my God, Adam Porter with an interception. <laughs> that was Adam Porter was the right outside linebacker that we drafted and converted to a middle linebacker. He's a run stopper, but he's got those no glove mitts. Dude, you see a middle linebacker, no gloves on. You know that guy's a psychopath. And he just comes up with the biggest play of the game. Nope, coach is gonna put us in a position to throw a fucking interception. I hate this coach so much. Please. Oh my God. Leonard Burr's gonna fucking heave one into... Dude, I can't watch this. I can't watch this horse shit. Derrick Henry, Derrick Henry. You just got sacked out of... You just got sacked out of field goal range. That is literally the only thing that you cannot do in that situation. And you know how you prevent that? You run the fucking football. Oh my God, I'm so mad. Oh my God, we're actually punting for the third straight fucking possession. First and 10, Packers are trotting it back out here. We were already in field goal range to win the fucking game. This is some of the most piss poor football I've ever seen. After Adam Porter made the play of his career. Oh my goodness, they don't want to see London succeed. Coach, you deserve to be fired after this. It can't end in a tie. It's a playoff game. Johnny Matthews throws a mallard there. Toss play here to Mixon. And look who's there, Nick Bolton. He's going back to their urn. Oh my God, 18. <laughs> the eight, number 18 on the Packers is getting death threats tonight. Holy shit. This is a mid-off. Neither of these teams deserves to go to the Super Bowl. I still think we'll go to the Super Bowl. But we don't deserve it. Damn, we just chucked him. Just gave him a little push. Oh, now you want to check it down to Derrick Henry. Got it. See, because that would have been an immaculate decision the last drive. I guess he's kind of a small tight end. Not really. Holy fucking Hail Mary nuke. Where'd you just throw that ball? What? Oh my God. End of overtime. 
Wait, the game doesn't think the game's over, right? Is that why you just threw a Hail Mary? Did you think the game was over? Oh, okay, thank God. I thought that the game thought the game was over, and that's why I just threw a Hail Mary. We just connected on a Hail Mary. Oh my God, we're gonna win this game. I'm firing coach anyway. I don't even care. Justin Tucker with the game winner, of course. Of course he drills it, because he's Justin Tucker. We could have done that twice in this game. Uh, you know what? It doesn't matter. Better team wins, baby. The Monarchs and Queen Elizabeth avoid an incredibly, incredibly embarrassing defeat. Leonard Burr, 22 for 28 and a touchdown. Who caught that? Nuke. It was number nine. It was Randy Verdon. Randy Verdon caught the nuke. That was such a wild play. Oh my god. Hey, a dub is a dub. We advance to the NFC Championship. Let's go. Hopefully the NFC Championship is not nearly as stressful as that was. Holy shit. The 11 and 6 Monarchs taking on the 11 and 6 Rams. Wow, 92 overall. What I find interesting is our fourth highest overall player is Brian Branch right now. He's a 96 overall. Then Nick Bolton Hawkinson, DK Metcalf. And Burr's getting there, but Brian Branch just progressed like crazy. So we're taking on the Rams here. They The Rams are coming off a Super Bowl win. They got 90 99 Lamar, 99 Brian Burns, 99 Pacheco, Tyson Campbell, Derek Brown. It's a crazy team. Chris Miles, superstar right guard. Rashad Bateman's a superstar wide receiver. Lockett. Oh, we're taking on Lockett. Lockett was one of the guys I was not able to get for the London squad. We do get an upgrade players. Osiris Torrance, go up to an 85 for this kid. All right, let's go, boys. NFC Championship time. 93 versus 92. Let's run it. Rams versus Monarchs. Rams are on the board early. Monarchs respond. Turn them over. We turn it. Oh, and now we got a scoring drought at the end of the second. The Rams score 14 to 10, 13 to 14. Wait a minute. I think we just punted. Lamar from his own five. Three minutes left. We have a one point lead. Low scoring, low scoring affair. Guys, why are we not ready for that? Obviously, they're running it out of mm, coach. C coach, this is not rugby, coach. They're going to run all over you. They got two, they got 299 overall running backs back there. Lamar's 21 for 26, 169 yards. Yeah, it's been a defensive game. Two minutes, eight seconds left. Oh, you're so close to Lamar. Check down to Pacheco. You need to make that tackle. You do. Johnny Frazier. I love Johnny Frazier. Have my children, Johnny. Talk to me. Oh, get home. Nate Booker. Wow, he still converted that. But what's you know what's awesome? That clock is ticking. Yeah, they're forced to use a timeout. I was about to say, I don't know how Lamar made that throw, but it helps us. Oh, big blitz. I love that, coach. Go get him. Send Nick Bolton, too. Five-man rush. Throws a laser. Incomplete. Damn it, he was open. One more blitz. I see Adam Porter up there. One more blitz. Fourth and eight. Drops back in coverage. Are we there? Are we there? <laughs> Dude, two missed two missed throws and that is all she wrote oh my god a one point victory against mcveigh and the rams that's the reigning super bowl champions right there i certainly like our odds uh leonard burn amazing game but wow a lot of defense was played today pacheco was good deshaun bennett was good hawkinson five for 61 who had the touchdowns derrick henry had a receiving touchdown metcalf had a receiving touchdown cordell leonard had a sack johnny frazier had half a sack one point w right there that's huge our super bowl is against the jacksonville jaguars who are a 90 overall and they have josh allen who else they got jaguars got 99 allen 99 talanoa hufanga 98 pat fryermuth daniel hunter paris johnson martin emerson david montgomery Eric McCoy, Keenan Allen. Talanoa Hufanga is a monster in franchise. Josh Allen, Keenan Allen. Oh, it's the Allen. It's the Allen combo. That's what it is. The London Monarchs take it on Josh Allen and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Big game, big game, big game, big game. Zero to zero. The Monarchs on the board first. 7 0, 14 0. Jaguars respond. 21 7, 21 14. 24, four, oh my God, are we gonna fucking smack them? 21, 31, 21 to 31, but the Jaguars are knocking on the door here. Looking like they might score 88s open. <gasps> Great defense. Ooh, what a play. Caleb Farley jumps up, swats that down from Keenan Allen. Fourth and eight. That's, that holds him to a field goal. That's big. That's big. There's three timeouts left for each team. So this Super Bowl's not over, but we string together a few, few first downs and, and it will be. First and 10, play action. Play action to Derrick Henry just to throw the check down behind the line of scrimmage to Derrick Henry. That is bizarre. That is a big fucking cock play call. And that's why, because your clock management's so bad if you throw incomplete. Now it's third and 13, and coach really would like to get this one. 
Dude, don't fuck it. Unbelievable. That was so piss poor. We basically used no clock and we're handing the Jaguars the ball back beyond the 50. How embarrassing. Opening play for the Jaguars is a very scary throw from Josh Allen. Third and six, Jaguars are in no huddle, trying to preserve that clock. Josh Allen drops back over the middle, caught. The only thing we have going for us is they have to score a touchdown. They can't settle for a field goal. Josh Allen looks low, good defense. Nick Bolton. <sighs> Huge defensive stop, dude. We're, oh, yeah, I was just about to say, we're not getting any pass rush. But finally, we do, and Christian Wilkins picks up the sack. Third and 14. Keep going. Keep going. Big heave. He's wide open. It's overthrown. Fourth and 14. The final play, potentially, of the Super Bowl. Fourth and 14. Josh Allen, play action. Unloads. Swatted. CTP! Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Jaguars have three timeouts. One first down ends it. If we don't get the first down, we're back to the drawing board. Hand off Derrick Henry. Absolutely no room. Let's go. One more hand off Derrick Henry. Let's go! First down! Victory formation for the Monarchs! Woo! Who needs a civil war when you've got a, you got a Super Bowl championship? Dude, I used to clown British people. I used to say, how many SEC championships do you have? But now they have a Super Bowl. Oh, let's go! Dude, the massive defensive plays by Nick Bolton, Cam Taylor Britt, and Caleb Farley down the stretch there. Woo! Cam Taylor Britt! What a game. I think Burr's gonna probably win Super Bowl MVP. I don't know, though. We'll have to see, but look at that. The, the Monarchs colored confetti. Derrick Henry, he wanted it more than anybody, and he clinched it there at the end. Derrick Henry's retiring after this season, bro. He's been dropping overalls like crazy. Leonard Burr getting lifted up. Bring that trophy out, baby. It's London's very own. Let's get it, boys. Let's get it. They got the homie hoist in it. You gotta love that, man. Look at that. The youngster. The youngster. And if he gets Super Bowl MVP, Superstar X Factor, not that it matters, since we just wanted the ring, what a game. So Leonard Burr, 20 for 27, 226, two touchdowns, most likely gets MVP. I don't really see how he does it. Hawkinson's nine for 93 and a touchdown. That's pretty good. Defensively, we really, dude, we never hardly got to the quarterback. One sack from Wilkins, and then they sacked us once with Amir Tatum. No winners, no turnovers on, on either side. That's just a really, really good game. There it is, baby. Somehow, the London Monarchs are a two-time Super Bowl champion. I know why it's doing that, but it's still funny. Leonard Burr is MVP. Aaron Donald wins Defensive Player of the Year. God, he's still playing? And he's on the Texans. And Trevor Lawrence on this, like, Bills team has just been God. He won MVP three years in a row. He wins it two years in a row. Yeah, he's just been so amazing. Won the Super Bowl and Super Bowl MVP in 24. Yeah, dude, he, like, dethroned Mahomes. 31 to 24, big dub, baby! All right, boys. London Monarchs are Super Bowl champs. I hope you guys enjoyed this rebuild. It was an absolute blast. Let's look at the team one time before we hop out of here. Uh, we brought a Lombardi trophy to London. You've got the superstar X Factor youngster, Leonard Burr. Oh my God, Derrick Henry actually got a fucking ring and retired. He literally retired. That is so funny. Uh, so no hat back on this team anymore other than uh, the rookie we got in the first draft. So he's not a rookie anymore, but... Metcalf, Verdon, and Hardman. I mean, we still got multiple 99s, a great O-line. Uh, defensively, you still got Vita Vea, Wilkins, Booker, Bolton, who's up to a 99. Brian Branch, Johnny, ooh, ooh. We lost Jalen Petrie in free agency, so we'd have to shore that up too in the future. But I mean, this is still a dynasty. It's London's, it's London's dynasty. All right, boys, hell of a rebuild. I love you guys. I hope you enjoyed, and I can't wait to see you in the next one. Peace.